Hi everyone, this is uh, the third video from the chapter and today we will start the topic uh, diversity in the living world. If you look around, you will see a large variety of living organisms be it potted plants, insects, birds, your pets or other animals and plants. There are also several organisms that you cannot see with your naked eye but they are all around you. If you are to increase the area that you make observations in, the range and, and the range and variety of organisms that you see would increase. Yeah, whenever we see our surroundings, we will be familiarized or we will be familiar to various varieties or we can say the variety of plants that are prevailing in our surroundings even the it which includes the potted plants insects birds our pets like dogs cats or other animals and plants there are also several general several organisms that we cannot see with our naked eye but they all around you it means that here it is talking about the microorganisms. From the name itself, micro means small. The microorganisms are very small that are not visible with our naked eye. And uh, to observe these organisms, uh, we need microscope to view the microorganisms like bacteria, fungi and other things. My viruses, etc. Obviously, if you were to visit a dense forest, you would you would probably see a much great number and kinds of living organisms in it. Each different kind of plant, animal, or organisms that you see represent a species. Uh, we can uh, for dense forest, Amazon has a sound diversity. Okay, India is also home to four biodiversity hotspots. These are Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Eastern Himalaya, Indo-Burma region and the Western Ghats. Now these are biodiversity hotspots where you will find a large variety of organisms. And among forests, Amazon has also got sound variety. You would probably see a much greater number and kinds of living organisms in it. Each different kind of plant, animal or organisms that you see represents a species. The every different kind of plant or animals or organisms, whatever we see, represents a species. Every different individuals, sorry, every different kinds of individual, kinds, every different kinds represent a species. The number of species that are known and described range between 1.7 to 1.8 millions. These refer to biodiversity or the number and types of organisms present on earth. We should remember here that as we explore new areas and even old ones, new organisms are continuously being identified. Whenever we explore or we move about from one place to even explore new areas or even the ex already explored places we can also see that very new organisms are there and uh, these organisms are being um, identified some identified by some taxonomist also or some scientist as stated earlier, there are millions of plants and animals in the world. We know the plants and animals in our own area by their local name. This local name would vary from place to place even within a country. Probably you would recognize the confusion that would be created if we did not find ways and means to talk to each other to refer to organisms we are talking about. In our locality, we may find various uh, plants or animals and we will uh, 
and most of uh, them we know by their local names but this local name whenever we go to from na our native place to some other places this local name may change and uh, we will not be able to recognize the thing for this a common medium should be there or a name should be given so that it should be known internationally with the name only and for this reason that nomenclature was given or we can say that and there is a need to standardize the naming of living organisms such that a particular organism is known by the same name all over the world this is this process is called nomenclature obviously nomenclature or naming is only possible when the organisms is described correctly we know to what organism the name is attached to this is identification before naming it we should describe the organism correctly and we give it a proper naming and for this proper identification is very much essential in order to facilitate the study number of scientists have established procedures to assign a scientific name to each organism this is acceptable to biologists all over the world for plants scientific names are based on agreed principles and criteria which are provided in international code of botanical nomenclature for plants the name will be given or under the authority of international code for botanical nomenclature and for animals it should be that international code of zoological nomenclature the scientific names ensure that each organism has only one name description of any organism should enable the people to arrive at the same name they also ensure that such a name has not been used for any other known organism the scientific name should ensure that each organism has means uh, the scientific name should uh, give guarantee or assure that the name should be given for one one to one there for one organism for or one plant the name should be one and this should be known by and this should be known throughout the world by the same, uh, same name and they also ensure that such a name has not been used for any other known organism biologists follow universally accepted principles to provide scientific names to no organisms each organism or oh sorry each name has two components the generic name and the specific epithet the generic name you can uh, we can say that the genus and species this system of providing a name with two components is called binomial nomenclature bi means two and nomenclature means naming here two type naming with two components that is with generic name and specific epithet is called binomial nomenclature this naming system was given by carolus linnaeus this is is being practiced by biologists all over the world this naming system using a two word format was found convenient let us ex uh, take the example of mango to understand the way of providing scientific names better the scientific name of mango is written as mangifera indica let us know how it is a binomial name in this name the mangifera represents the genus while indica is a particular species or a specific epithet other universal rules of nomenclature are as follows means in the mangifera indica 
the two names uh, binomial that is uh, two words are there mangifera is uh, representing the genus while indica is a particular species or it is representing that specific epithet some other universal rules for nomenclature are as follows biological names are given generally in latin and written in italics biological names are generally in latin and written in italics they are latinized or derived from latin irrespective of their origin okay means uh, biological names are generally latin from are taken from latin or latinized or derivatives of latin and are written in italics the first word in a biological name represents the genus that we have studied earlier that mangifera while the second component denotes the specific epithet here it is indica okay both the words in a biological name when hand written are separately underlined or printed in italics to indicate their latin origin so whenever we write any botanical or any scientific name the two words should be separated and for handwritten cases we should underline it separately or for printed purpose it should be written in italics to indicate their latin origin okay the first word denoting the genus starts with a capital letter while the specific epithet starts with a small letter it can be illustrated with the example of mangifera indica c here uh, m is the capital and i is small and name of author appears after the specific epithet that is the end of the biological name and is written in an abbreviated form example mangifera indica lin here that is for carolus linnaeus it indicates that this species was first described by linnaeus since it is nearly impossible to study all the living organisms it is necessary to devise some means to make this possible this process is classification because uh, individually it is uh, nearly impossible to study the living organisms so there should be some criteria to study it and this is this process is classification classification is the process by which anything is grouped into convenient categories based on some easily based on some easily observable characters so classification should be on the basis of some easily observable characters for example we can easily recognize groups such as plants or animals or dogs cats or insects the moment we use any of this term we associate certain characters with the organism in that group we should have to classify in such a way that they should be easily observable characters like whenever we see a group of such plants or animals that moment whenever we hear or we can recall that dogs we can imagine something about that what the dog is so the name should be like that or the classification should be like that the moment that we use any of these terms we associate certain characters with the organism in that group what image do you see when you think of a dog obviously each of one each one of us will see dogs and not cats now if we think of alsatians we know what we are talking about similarly suppose we are to say mammals you would of course think of animals with external ears and body ears likewise likewise in plants if we try to talk of wit the picture in each of our mind
the picture in each of our minds will be of wheat plants not of rice or any other plant hence all these dogs cats mammals wheat rice plants animals etc are convenient categories we use to study organisms the scientific term for these categories is taxa this uh, convenient categories of uh, identifying that is we call it taxa or classification is called taxa here you must recognize that taxa can indicate categories at very different levels plants also form a taxa wheat is also a taxa similarly animals mammals dogs etc are all taxa but you know that a dog is a mammal and mammals are animals therefore animals mammals and dog represents taxa at different levels hence based on characteristics all living organisms can be classified into different taxa and this process of classification is taxonomy and the taxonomy is the process of classification external and internal structure along with the structure of cell development process and ecological uh, information of organisms are essential for the basis of modern taxonomic studies okay hence the characteristics uh, character uh, hence the characterization identification classification nomenclature are the process that are basic to taxonomy taxonomy is not something new human beings have always been interested in knowing more and more about the various kinds of organisms particularly with reference to their own use in early days human beings needed to find sources for their basic needs of food clothing and shelter hence the earliest classifications were based on the uses of various organisms human beings were since long not only interested in knowing more about different kinds of organisms and their diversity is but also the relationship among them this branch of study is referred to as systematics that is the study of knowing the knowing more about different types of organisms and the diversity and relationship among them is systematics so what systematics is derived from latin word systema which means systematic arrangement of organisms linnaeus used systema naturae as the title of his publication the scope of systematics was later enlarged to include identification nomenclature and classification systematics takes into account evolutionary relationship between organisms uh, here uh, systematics is a vast topic okay that's all for today thank you